Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to every deadliest disease explained in 13 minutes. I feel like this is a new YouTube like video style with these like these balls that sort of, I guess, show different diseases or different whatever the topic's about. It'll be different things, basically. Because the last one I've done was about like political ideologies or something like that. And it was the same sort of concept, but... We're now looking at the deadliest diseases. So yeah, we're just, just going to jump into this. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. I'm going to do a movie reaction today that I'm hopefully going to post today or tomorrow. It depends on how long it takes to upload because movie reactions take ages. But we're going to check this out. I know, I mean, in terms of name wise, I know about all of these apart from this one here. I have no idea what CJD is. Brain eating amoeba. I don't know what that is. FFI, don't know. I don't know the bottom ones, bar rabies. But I know the others. I know the names of some of them as well, but I don't know what they are. Like anthrax, I know, I've heard of it. I know, I know it's a disease, but I wouldn't be able to explain to you what it is. But we're going to check this out. That's what this video is about. And let's jump into this. Bubonic plague, black death. The bubonic plague is the most common form of plague caused by the bite of an infected flea. If you were a medieval peasant back in Europe, you'd stand a two out of three chance of being among the 200 million it killed. An annoying rat would take a nap on your straw bed, and within a week, you'd be the new victim of the Black Death as you experienced extremely excruciating symptoms including high fever, painful swollen lymph nodes, and severe fatigue. Without antibiotics, over 70% of people who got the bubonic plague died from Mental. it. It wiped out entire towns and spread so quickly that it killed so many people that there weren't enough survivors to bury the dead. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a dangerous infectious this disease that usually attacks. Was really dangerous, like even in the 20th century, wasn't it? I don't. I feel like now a lot more recently it's got a lot more like because obviously like antibiotics and medicines. It's a lot less dangerous. Obviously, it can be in certain scenarios still very bad, but I feel like nowadays it's not really a death sentence as it used to be. Again, it used to be, I feel like even less than 100 years ago, it was a death sentence, but maybe it wasn't that long ago. I don't know. That's the lungs. It's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which spreads through the air when someone with it coughs or sneezes. Imagine this, it's 1890 and you begin developing a horrible cough that lasts for weeks, progressively worsening chest pains, starting to cough up blood, experiencing unbearable fatigue, a high fever, and night sweats. As the disease wore on, it would over time simply eat your lungs from the inside out. Upon your wow. death, as the doctor opened your body to determine the cause of death, he would see your lungs resembling cheese, as the bacteria had made multiple hollow holes feasting on the lungs. Jesus. Without a six-month-long treatment regimen with multiple side effects, anyone who gets this disease has a 60% chance of dying. What, even now? I've... Oh... I mean, maybe it's just a lot harder to get now because of, I guess, vaccines. I thought it was, I just didn't really think it was anywhere near as dangerous. I guess it is then. God damn. Ebola. The God, this frightened me as a kid, man. I mean, isn't this the one where you like, your body just hurt, you just cough out blood, you bleed from loads of places. I swear that's what it was about. Ebola virus, a highly lethal and terrifying disease, gained its infamous reputation due to its severe symptoms, including bleeding from multiple body organs. This virus attacks the body's immune and vascular systems, causing widespread damage. Victims often experience symptoms like fever, fatigue, muscle pain, and intense headaches before progressing to more severe stages. One example of this case would be in 2014, when one day a man would unknowingly eat contaminated meat. The next, he'd be suffering from one hallmark of Ebola's symptoms, hemorrhagic fever, which would lead to bleeding from various organs, such as the eyes, nose, and gums. This bleeding is due to the virus quite literally shredding through your blood vessels, and in a last-ditch effort, your brain throws everything it has at it through a cytokine, a kind of like killing a hornet's nest with a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Ebola's gruesome symptoms Damn. make its current mortality 90% of all those infected, meaning you'd have a 9 out of 10 chance of dying. Crazy. Leprosy. Leprosy, caused by a bacterium called Mycobacterium leprae, often starts with pale or reddish patches on the skin that are numb to the touch. If left untreated, it can cause severe nerve damage, skin lesions, muscle weakness, and paralysis. 
Over time, your fingers, toes, and nose would begin to fall off, leaving you disfigured permanently. Jesus. However, contrary to what most believe, leprosy is only transmitted through prolonged close contact with an untreated person, but it is not highly contagious. In the past, people with leprosy were shunned from society and forced to live in colonies with other sick people as people were scared to catch it. Malaria. I mean, I get it. I guess in those times, that's the only way you could really avoid it. Area. Malaria is a severe disease caused by a parasite transmitted through the bite of infected mosquitoes. The parasite travels to the liver, which multiplies before infecting and destroying red blood cells. Symptoms usually appear within 5 to 10 days after being bitten. Malaria is so effective at invading and killing red blood cells that scientists can't come up with a way of removing them from red blood cells without killing everything in your body. Malaria can also cause anemia, convulsions, and confusion due to the widespread destruction of red blood cells by the replicating malaria parasites inside them. If untreated, the parasite load in the blood continues to increase, leading to more severe complications as the parasite continues to invade and destroy any organ it can get a hold of. Anthrax. Anthrax is a bacterial infection caused by the spore-forming bacterium and could also be used as a biological weapon. Assuming you oh. were a biological terrorist, you'd need only $9,000. So, this is where I've heard of, like, anthrax then. I think I've heard of it through, like, bombs and stuff or like uh, as weapons that's where i know this from i don't actually know it from the disease then to acquire the genome for anthrax spores the lab and materials to make your biological weapon right in the comfort of your home inhalation anthrax is the most severe form typically caused by inhaling spores leading to severe respiratory symptoms the infection spreads rapidly through the lungs and bloodstream and as your body responds by sending its white blood cells to swallow it up They've adapted to live inside your white blood cells. And just like the Alien movie, they burst out of your white blood cells. Rinse and repeat and you have a body-wide catastrophe as the bacteria use your cells as fuel for its never-ending hunger until you die. And it's not over. The spores will wait for the next victim for years. However, thankfully, almost all cases are related to animals for now. Polio. Polio, while not a funny topic, can be understood with humor. Imagine your body as a fortress with a moat, your spinal cord, guarded by knights, your immune system. Polio is like a general sieging your castle. It's a virus that can swim through the moat, and when it successfully breaches the castle walls, your immune defenses, it causes lifelong and irreversible symptoms. It primarily affects children under the age of five and can lead to irreversible paralysis. Once it enters the is body... Is this the one where people... There's the person who's like in the steel lung. I think that's what it was. The massive thing that he's just had to be in his whole life. Is that from polio? The virus multiplies in the intestine, which can invade the nervous system and cause paralysis. However, the introduction of vaccines has significantly reduced polio cases Maybe worldwide. it's why. Tetanus. Tetanus is a bacterial infection and quite a severe disease that can affect anyone within the range of a rusty playground. Tetanus bacteria are often found in soil, dust, and manure, and the infection usually enters the body through open wounds or cuts. If you'd prick yourself on the playground with a rusty nail and brush it off, but little do you know that an unwelcome guest has made itself home. Once inside the body, the bacteria releases a toxin that affects the nerves, causing muscle stiffness and spasms, particularly in the jaw and neck muscles. This can lead to difficulty opening the mouth and swallowing, which is why it's called lockjaw. The severity of tetanus can be life-threatening if left untreated, resulting in the complete locking of every muscle in position, Jeez. leaving you in agonizing pain for hours without an end. Cholera. Cholera is a bacteria infection known for its rapid onset of severe diarrhea and dehydration, often leading to a life-threatening condition or death in less than 24 what? hours, if not treated promptly. The bacteria are hours. typically found in contaminated water sources or food, particularly in areas with inadequate sanitation and poor hygiene practices. When someone ingests contaminated water or food, the bacteria release a toxin in the intestines, which results in profuse watery diarrhea, vomiting, and leg cramps. 
It rapidly leads to severe dehydration, and without treatment, even large volumes of water consumption may not prevent the intense symptoms because the bacteria toxins make it so that you reasonably cannot physically hold anything in your stomach without severe vomiting. Mad cow disease. Mad cow disease is a bizarre example of animal disease that can transmit to humans by eating meat. Picture a serene pasture with content cows grazing peacefully, and then suddenly one cow starts behaving like it's lost its mind. If this crazy cow was supposed to be a brain cell, that was a well-oiled machine. Tiny protein cogs work together smoothly to keep the machine running and your brain functioning correctly. Now, picture a wrong cog that's gotten bent out of shape. This is like a prison. It doesn't fit right with the other cogs and throws the whole machine out of shape. Soon, the entire machine grinds to a halt just like a prion-infected brain cell stops working correctly. In cows with mad cow disease, this malfunctioning happens in many brain cells, leading to spongy holes and a decline in brain function. That's why they might stumble, behave oddly, or even become aggressive. The scary part is that this rogue cog problem can be contagious. If you eat meat from an infected cow, the prion can jump into your brain and start twisting your cogs too. This is how humans can get variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, VCJD, the human form of mad cow disease. Damn. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD, is a mysterious and perplexing puzzle in brain disorders like its cow counterpart. Again, imagine your brain as an intricate jigsaw where every piece has a specific role and place. CJD, however, is like that annoying puzzle piece that doesn't fit but insists on disrupting the entire picture. This condition is once again caused by misfolded proteins called prions. These prions act like troublemakers at a perfectly organized party causing chaos and confusion. They convince other proteins in your brain to misfold, setting off a chain reaction of neurological mayhem. As it progresses, it also erases the parts of the puzzle. Memory loss, cognitive decline, muscle spasms, and personality changes blur the once clear image. The puzzle becomes increasingly disordered until communication and movement are lost entirely. Unlike a puzzle you can complete, there's no solving to CJD. So you get it and you're just done. It's a rare and devastating condition with no known cure, leaving healthcare professionals and researchers puzzled by its complexity and impact on the brain. Brain-eating amoeba. This sounds fun. Brain-eating amoeba. <laughs> God damn that. I don't know what's happening here, but let's see. Neglaria fowleri, often called the brain-eating amoeba, is a microscopic <laughs> organism that lurks in warm, freshwater environments such as lakes, rivers, and hot springs. Imagine dipping in warm, natural water on a hot summer day. Most of the time, it's a delightful experience, but occasionally, if the conditions are just right, Neglaria fowleri might enter the nose. What? Once inside, it travels up the olfactory nerve and can cause an extremely severe brain infection. This amoeba's presence in the brain can lead to symptoms like severe headaches, fever, nausea, and a stiff neck, making it feel like a science fiction plot unfolding in real life. Unfortunately, PAM is typically swift and almost always fatal, with a meager survival. God damn, imagine getting a disease like that from going in the ocean. Flipping hell. Right. Familial Fatal Insomnia, FFI. God damn, insomnia, man. That's got to be one of the worst ways to just live. Like, just not being able to sleep just because... I don't, I don't know, is it your mind racing? I feel like it's a lot more than just your mind racing, because when it's insomnia, I feel like it's a, lot, it's a lot deeper than just constantly thinking. But man, I feel terrible for people that have to deal with any sort of insomnia. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's times where I can't sleep. But in general, my sleep is pretty good. And I'm just so thankful for that because this could be anyone, man. Familial fatal insomnia is quite possibly the definition of a waking nightmare. A person slowly loses their ability to sleep, and as they do, their mind and body unravel like a chilling thriller. However, it is an exceedingly rare genetic disorder caused by a mutation in your genes. The nightmare begins with insomnia, which worsens over time, leading to a complete and irreversible loss of sleep. As sleep Jeez. deprivation intensifies, patients experience hallucinations, delirium, and severe psychiatric symptoms, 
almost like something out of a surreal horror story. Ultimately, FFI leads to a total breakdown of the body's functions, resulting in death. Kuru. Kuru Jeez. is a fatal brain disease causing neurological degeneration. However, one thing is added to the mix. Cannibalism. Um. In this one, Kuru emerged as a result of consuming the brains and nervous tissues of deceased relatives during their mortuary feasts. The name Kuru Excuse itself me? means to shiver or trembling in fear, which aptly describes the symptoms that would eventually haunt those who partook in this ritual. Victims would experience muscle tremors, loss of coordination, and a disturbing inability to control their movements. The end stages of Kuru resulted in a state of profound debilitation and death, often within a year of symptom onset. Perhaps another reason on the already long list of why eating people is a horrible idea. <laughs> Rabies. Tartite. Rabies is an illness caused by a virus that makes animals and people go rabid with symptoms such as uncontrollable bursts of rage and is the most lethal disease on earth. Jeez. In this unsettling tale, the rabies virus is transmitted through the bite of an infected animal infiltrating the nervous system and causing madness and terror. Once human symptoms appear, they're nothing short of a terrifying thriller. I saw a video of someone trying to drink with like they had rabies and I think it developed to a point where like it was at the stage where they can't even swallow. And this man was trying to swallow some water and you could tell that he was his body physically was just, was just trying to throw it up and he was shaking and all this stuff and I think he managed to drink it, but obviously I mean I feel like if you're at that point it's just a matter of time, right? But just seeing that seeing what it does to your body it's scary to think that something can control your body like that like you're just so out of control what a horrible flipping like what a horrible thing to catch i mean all of these are horrible right but i mean rabies is the most deadly disease but just in general it's just it's an absolute horror show fear of water severe hallucinations and violent spasms are just some of the horrifying effects What's even scarier is that 98% of all rabies cases lead to a tragic end soon after symptoms appear. Once they do, it's nearly always fatal. Being a survivor of rabies, you gotta be, like, blessed by something above you. This dude is criminally underrated. I mean, I think it's... I don't know, I feel like this is AI. I always get the idea that this, like, I can sort of tell when something is, like, AI or not. Maybe not. I mean, I enjoyed the video, but boop. there we go. Um, hopefully you enjoyed, and let me know some more diseases that should have been mentioned in this video. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying, but, um, yeah, until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.